in this almost the last great industry we thought could be handled only by men, these mothers, wives, and sweethearts came to stand shoulder to shoulder with them in almost every capacity. Women were first permitted to enter the Sparrows Point steel mill as workers during World War II as many of the steelworking men had been sent off to the war. When the men returned, most women, especially those working the positions that were more labor intensive, went back to the home. Women were able to return to the mill in 1974 when the consent decree banned discrimination based on a person's sex. We all worked the same jobs. If I was on the upper deck changing squeegee rolls, there was a woman with me. More than likely there was a woman with me. My, our crews were pretty integrated. So now if, if I was underneath the crane, there was probably a woman underneath the crane. If I ran the crane, guaranteed there was a, a woman running the crane. During both the distant and more recent past, though women were allowed to enter the mill, various forms of sexism followed. Many described the mill as being a man's world, even after gender integration. Being a female, and especially a younger female, lots of people, they might not know your name, they might not know uh, what your story is, but they know you, they know your face because there's not many of us. So I, they'll, you would know everybody, they would introduce themselves just for the fact like, they're like, oh, where, where does she come from? Being expected to exist in the man's world of steel production meant having women return to the home after World War II. These ideas, though diluted, continue to manifest in contemporary work culture. Despite some policy changes made over the years, there never was true systemic change. Without the fundamental shift of gender relations, sexism was still found in the work culture of the steel mill. Isn't this pretty hot for you, Miss Spillane? Well, I hear it gets kind of hot around the kitchen stove, too. I never thought of that. As women continued working in the mill, they were tolerated and accepted more and more. However, sexism is usually thought of in explicit terms. Though much of the overt sexism ceased, covert sexism was common. Benevolent sexism seen through the special treatment of women was particularly prevalent. You know, it'll help you out a little bit more if you need it. So, whereas like if you're a guy, it's like, ah, they're expected to know what to do. Though it can be thought of as a relic from the past, sexism in all its forms is not only present but commonplace. The true question is are we able to identify its presence in our lives and its perpetual evolution?